Good evening. It is a great joy for us to be together to celebrate the birth of our Savior at this Christmas Eve service. I'm Mother Stacy. It's my privilege to welcome everyone here on behalf of this congregation, the Church of the Ascension, on behalf of the Diocese of Northwestern Pennsylvania, of whom we are one of many mission outposts throughout our region, but most importantly, of course, on behalf of Jesus Christ, because we gather together in his name to celebrate all the incredible things that he's doing in our midst and in our world and in us and with us and through us. I know this is a very different Christmas than most of us hoped to be celebrating, but we still need to be reminded that whether we worship together in person or come together virtually from our own homes, this is truly our Father's house. And we each and every one belong here and have a place here and are missed when we're not here. Our service this evening comes from the Episcopal Book of Common Prayer. It is a service of Holy Communion. We will be celebrating communion this evening, even though we are not able to receive physically, we are asking by special prayer to be blessed to receive for this Christmas celebration spiritually. Most folks should have a copy of the bulletin that follow along with us. Those were sent out. If you do not have one, uh, I'm sure you will find it fairly easy to follow along in any event. As always, when we worship online together, I invite you to pray with your body as well as with your heart. So if you are able to sit, stand, and kneel as uh, we normally do during the service, please feel free to do that. If not, know that that is just fine as well. Because it is Christmas and because we are brave, we're going to begin our service by singing one verse of the beautiful Christmas hymn. It's number 83 in our Episcopal hymnal, O Come All Ye Faithful. I invite and encourage you to sing along with us at home and to please stand as you are able. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Let us pray. O oh God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the scriptures. First reading this evening is from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. <clears throat> For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 96, found in your leaflet or in the Book of Common Prayer. We will read it responsively, breaking at the asterisk. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing, Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. And his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the sea be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes. When he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness. And the people with his truth. The second lesson today, or this evening, is from Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all training us to renounce impiety and world pa worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly 
while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quinarius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and whom was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. What a crazy year. Illness running rampant. 
taking the young and the old, those that were spared, being outcast, quarantined, government unrest, the government spending more and more taxes, trying to take more and more influence, sending troops here and there, uncertain of who would rule next, local government officials just as bad, so busy trying to appease and keep the emperor happy to stay on his good side, yet also trying to do whatever they can to line their own pockets. And in the midst of that, of course, we try to have a census to count all the people, and no one's really sure who should be counted how or where. A crazy year. But I'm not talking about 2020. I'm actually talking about the year that Jesus was born. Sometime between 3 BC, 5 AD, we'll just say 1 AD for convenience sake. All that was happening at the birth of Christ. We tend to think that our own times are the most troubled, but really, think about it. All of those struggles, those trials, were happening then too. Everyone on the whim of the emperor had to go back to their family's hometown to be counted, to be enrolled, to be taxed. To be clear, that's what that's about. And the emperor was way off there in Rome, but the reach of the Roman Empire was so vast that people over probably, at that point, half the known world were affected by this whim. And yes, there was illness, and disease and sickness and wars and rumors of wars and little local colluding governments out to get what they could. And yet, and yet, in the midst of that, as Mary and Joseph has gone to Bethlehem, where they are to be registered, and Mary gives birth to her child out in the field, the shepherds hear from the angels. Don't be afraid. We bring you good news of great joy for all people. How must that have heard or sounded to the shepherds? in the time in which they lived. Probably not different than how it sounds to us, those of us who are desperately waiting for this year to be over. It's hard to believe, extraordinary to believe, that in times that have seemed so dark, a light has truly shone. And yet, there's that promise, good news of great joy for all the people. The good news that no matter how we seem, we seem to mess our world up, we humans. No matter how, through our own fault and through no fault of our own, but through the reality of living in a fallen existence, how troubled times become, God still speaks good news. The good news that God loves us. That God loves us so much that God chose to send the Son, God's only Son, to be with us, to become as one of us, so that the great divide that we had caused by our sin and turning from God could be breached. We couldn't claw our way back to heaven. 
And this year, if it's taught us anything, has taught us that we can't claw ourselves back to unanimity, to peace, to so many things. But we don't have to. Because God came from heaven to get us and make it possible for us to go home. In sending Christ, God has said, no more of darkness and sin and death. This is good news. Savior has come. The Savior has come to redeem what is broken and fallen, to heal what is sick, to restore relationships, and to shine light in the darkness. And this is good news. The coming of Christ is good news that indeed should bring great joy, great joy that we can stand. We can stand upright in the knowledge that we are beloved that God has chosen to redeem us, that God at great cost entered in to our darkness and brought that light. It's great joy. And the thing is, in that year so long ago, things didn't immediately transform for each individual life. The shepherds didn't suddenly stopped keeping their flocks. There was still difficulty. And yet, everything had changed because of the good news, the great joy that came with Christ. And it was for all the people. Not just some, not those who were nearby, not those who happened to be Jewish as Messiah was born Jewish, but for all the people, this good news. So in our own time, in our own time when we are so desperate to hear it, we need to proclaim again this good news. Christ is come. No more, no more does the earth lie in sin and darkness, but the light has shone. And the darkness is not and cannot and will not overcome it. That we, just as surely as we have begun the turn for the days growing ever lighter, we have begun the turn toward the more full realization of the love of God in Christ. That God is redeeming even this time and in the midst of a time that has been so hard, God is still so very good. And we are loved. And we are chosen. And we are redeemed. And God is with us. All of us. And that's good news. And we can have that deep, abiding joy and proclaim it. Proclaim it in our time as it's been proclaimed in all time and will continue to be proclaimed that Christ is come. A child has been born for us and we and all of creation have been transformed by that. Amen.
Let us profess our faith and say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became the heart of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on the time of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with Scripture. He ascended into heaven and to see at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are form two found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 385 and also in your service bulletin. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, Michael and Sean, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Praise and O Father, the coming of your kingdom and grant that your servants who now live by faith may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have mercy on us, forgive us. So may the light of your will
Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Please be seated. I do have just a few announcements this morning. Uh, obviously, in-person worship has been suspended, and we will continue to be meeting and worshiping together online. So we will worship this Sunday at our normal time of 1015. We will also offer a New Year's Day service, as is our tradition, the first service of the new year. That will be at noon on New Year's Day. We are... Um, going to have our annual meeting as per required by church law and our bylaws here at the Ascension. Um, that annual meeting will be on Sunday, January 31st at 11.30 a.m. Tentatively, uh, we are planning to have that meeting be both by call-in and by Zoom for folks, since we will doubtful, uh, doubtful that we'll be able to gather in person at that time. But I want to let folks know about that. Our church's annual meeting will be the 31st of January. Also, a brief reminder that uh, if you have donations you still want to have into the church to have them counted for the 2020 tax year, they need to be postmarked or into the church office by the 31st of December for us to be able to count those appropriately for you. And if you would like offering envelopes for 2021, we have those here at the church office and they can be picked up uh, during our church office hours. I think that's all of our announcements. So let us walk in love as Christ has loved us and gave himself an offering for us all. I invite you to stand as you are able. Our Eucharistic prayer this evening is Eucharistic prayer D. That's found on page 372 in the Book of Common Prayer if you have one with you. Or, of course, it's also in our leaflets. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, 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 holy Lord, 
God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup, we praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup they become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia! Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. As we now reflect upon the celebration and reception spiritually of this Holy Communion and this Holy Night, I invite you to join us as we sing Silent Night, which is on hymn number 111 in the hymnal, or I'm sure you know it. As our service concludes, I thank you again for being with us and wish you a very Merry Christmas. Remind you to say your prayers, wash your hands, stay safe, and know that you are so very loved. And now may God Almighty, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven and earth and earth and heaven, give you his peace and favor. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. I invite you, invite you to join us one last time for a hymn as we sing Hymn 100, Joy to the World. Mm -hmm. 
Our King has come. Thanks be God. Alleluia. Alleluia. 